Okay, welcome to Tinkercad. Uh, in this video, we are just going to get an overview of the workspace that you're going to be working in in Tinkercad. And hopefully, you can utilize that in the projects that you're going to be working on. So, let's just take a tour of the screen. We're going to start at the top left. Uh, at the top left, you have this Tinkercad icon. If you click that, that will bring you directly to the Tinkercad dashboard and that's the screen that you see when you first sign into Tinkercad. If you click that it's not going to open in a new tab though it's going to actually redirect you currently uh, to the dashboard. So if you've been working on a project and you were hoping to see some of your other projects at the same time maybe in a different tab you just have to be careful about that. Okay so if I click that it's actually going to go back to the dashboard as you can see here I can actually get back into my project. Uh, here's my project that was just created. So I can click Tinker This and then get back in. If you would like to open it in a new tab, there's a couple different ways you can do that. But one very easy way, if you have a mouse or you're on a trackpad, is to just um, simulate or right click and then just say Open Link in New Tab. And that's going to just bring you back to the dashboard in a new tab. So you can do that. Over here is uh, some of our recent designs. So if we click this, what we're going to see is a little pop-up with some of the things that we have recently uh, worked on, and then we can certainly go ahead and tinker those. The next thing here is the name of your project. Now, by default, Tinkercad is going to give you a kind of an awkward name. It's just going to create a name for you, very similar to um, you know maybe your Xbox account for the first time. You, you just get a weird, random name. Uh, it's really encouraged to rename that as soon as you get started. All right, so um, we can just click in here and then we can give it an appropriate name. That's going to help you later on down the road when you go to the dashboard and see your projects. You're going to have an idea as to what it was that you were working on. In addition, when we take our designs here and we save them, uh, by default, Tinkercad is going to use this name. So if you download your project and it's called Epic Stantia Snagit, you may not exactly remember what that was for some odd reason. Uh, so it's encouraged to rename things. I would also encourage you to rename things in such a way that you don't have spaces or things of that nature in it. So I'm just going to call this Intro to Workspace. All right, Intro to Workspace. And you'll see here I'm using a style called Camel Case, which is a way that we can put multiple words together but still distinguish between them. And that's by using an initial capital letter for each word. So capital I intro, capital T2, capital W workspace. And that really does help out uh, in the future. Uh, but you can certainly name things as you wish. You just may run into issues if you have spaces and punctuation and things of that nature. Okay, so that's the top left here. Then we have this toolbar right underneath it. And you can see most of this stuff is grayed out. And that's because I really haven't done anything at this point. So we have a copy. You can see here the tooltip says this uh, can also be uh, initiated with a control C. I'm on a Windows machine right now. Uh, so I can use control C. If I was on a Mac, I'd use command C. Uh, next to that we also have paste. We see control V or command V you could use there. This is the duplicate and repeat uh, tool that we'll take a look at at some point. Uh, it, you may have a part of your design that you want to copy and then immediately place. Um, so instead of using copy paste we can actually use this duplicate feature. It saves us a little bit of time and it is control D for duplicate. Then we also have the little trash can here, and that's going to enable us to delete something. Uh, and we can also use the delete key on our keyboard. Here we have our undo option. It's a little arrow. You're probably very familiar with many of these from other applications. We can also use Control Z uh, or Command Z if you're on a Mac. And then we also have redo. So for, uh, for, if for some reason you had undid something, you did something and you undid it using the undo feature and then you later realized oh wait no I actually need that before you do anything else um, you can do the redo and it will put that back so it's kind of like an undo of the undo um, as opposed to doing undo twice which would undo two things it's very confusing uh, but redo would undo and undo if you will and you can use control Y or command Y and that's fairly consistent with some other applications 
Okay, so that's the tools on the left. On the right, we're going to see some of these as we progress along, but let's just continue on the left hand side. Uh, Right down here, we have this box that says top and front. And this is actually an interactive tool. This is going to help you kind of move your workspace around so that you can gain a perspective on your design in a couple different ways. So if I just click front here, what that's going to do is it's going to rotate my workspace so that I'm looking at the front of the design. Uh, you'll see these little arrows here. I can actually shift that around and it's going to show me the, the left, the back, the front, and the right perspective as well. Now I don't have anything in my uh, workspace here so that may be difficult to see uh, but we'll put something in there and, and we'll show you that. Uh, you can also click and drag this around. Okay, So if you click and hold it and then you drag it around this is going to enable you to kind of get a, a like a 360 view on uh, your design alright so you can you can do that if you ever need to get back to the home view you can just click this home button here and that will just send you back to the natural view of your workspace uh, this little button right here is going to enable you to fit something into view now if I click that now it's not going to do anything uh, but it will be helpful later on when you have something that maybe you want to zero in on uh, it will help you kind of zoom and focus in on something in particular in your design then we have the zoom in. You can use this little plus. You can see here that it also gives you the tip that you can use the plus sign on your keyboard. Now keep in mind the plus sign on the keyboard is usually a shift function so you have to use shift and then press the plus uh, because it's typically shared with the, let's see, cheat, equal sign. Uh, you may have a numeric keypad on the right which has a plus sign so you could use that as well. You can also, if you have a, a mouse with a scroll wheel in the middle, you can also just uh, use the scroll wheel by shifting it up, scrolling it up. That will help you zoom in. And then we have the minus to zoom out. So you have the zoom out, you can click this button, you can click the minus sign on your keyboard. That does not involve a shift. And you can also scroll the wheel down. And then this is an interesting one. This is a switch to flat view or with what's called orthographic view. And if we click that, we'll just get like kind of an overview, a top perspective if you will but it's kind of two-dimensional we generally will not use that all that much okay on the right hand side we have a lot of tools here and uh, basically your eyes generally go right to all of these little tools here all these shapes that we have here and let's just take a look here we have a lot of predefined shapes for us to use and you can create a lot of different projects with those so we're going to start with just creating the cylinder. If I need to pull the cylinder into my project, I just click and drag and then I can just let go and it will place that in my workplace, my work plane. Okay? And I could click and drag something else in there as well. Okay? Um, you're going to get some information here. It's going to tell you kind of um, how big things are. So if I click on something, you'll see all of these little tool tips or these uh, little handles around the side of the objects and that's going to give you some information about that so if I just hover over this little corner here you can see that this is 20 by 20 now the standard unit of measurement is millimeters and that may be awkward for some of you that are coming to this for the first time because you may be used to working in feet and inches uh, but it's really easier to work with uh, the metric system uh, especially when we're 3D printing. Uh, millimeters are just easier to work with so you can see everything is done in millimeters. And um, just to show you what we're dealing with here, if you follow my mouse here to the bottom right of this little work plane here, you'll see that I can edit the grid. So this grid here is a, of a particular size and I can edit that and you'll see here the units by default are millimeters. Uh, we can change that to inches or bricks and that's kind of a a unit of measurement for uh, Lego bricks um, and we're not going to actually deal with that. So here we're going to deal with millimeters and then you can see the width is 200 by 200. Now you may need to kind of get a feel for what 200 millimeters looks like uh, and we'll talk a little bit more in class most likely about the size of the 3D printers that we're going to use. So you may want to redesign or reshape your grid to match uh, the 3D printer printing area. All right, but by default we see 200 by 200. 
Then you also at this, uh, in this little drop down at the bottom right, you also see this snap grid feature. And there's a little drop down here. And basically what this allows us to do is to, when we move objects around on the work plane that you can see here, we can do it in increments of certain things or to snap in certain areas. Uh, by default, it's one millimeter. So we can move things by one millimeter. So if I actually move something around using the arrow keys, left or right, you can see here that box is moving. It's actually going to be moving by one millimeter. But if I change that, if I want to make it even smaller of a change, I can change this to something uh, smaller. I can also go bigger. All right. So if I want to say like maybe I want to move it by a tenth of a millimeter, uh, I can select that. And now when I move this, um, I have to move it I have to click a lot of times to get that to move. So it's a, just kind of like changing the increment for how things move around on my work plane. Okay. Uh, when I do select an object in addition to these things, I also get this little pop up here that gives me a little bit more information about my shape. So you can see here that it's solid and it's red. If I click that, I can change the color if I want. Not uh, very purposeful in the end. Uh, because when we take these off, we're not necessarily going to be able to uh, retain that color information. So this is really just a visual for you. When we pull this from Tinkercad, everything's going to be really devoid of any kind of color. And then we'll choose what colors we want to use when we print things out. Uh, but the color there is for you to kind of uh, help you distinguish between different shapes. You'll also see some different settings for each particular shape. So I have a box, and so the box has a radius I can change here. All right, and you can see I can actually make it a sphere. Uh, number of steps generally means how many different incremental steps are being used in the creation of that space. You may not, for some shapes, really see any difference in the change of that. And in other shapes, you may see a huge difference. So it just really depends on the shape that you're using. Then you can also see some sliders here for the length, the width, and the height. So if I didn't want to come in here and use these little tools, I could use these little sliders here and change things up. Okay. You also, also see hole, and we'll see that a little bit later. Um, we also have the ability to take a shape and make it a hole as opposed to a solid figure. Uh, so you can do that. And then you'll see it, it's kind of translucent. Again, we'll see that a little bit later. And then we can also do some, excuse the bell, we can also do some other things. We can lock that. So if we have decided that this is really important to hold onto, we can definitely lock it and make sure that it doesn't move or get manipulated. Okay? Now, just one other thing I want to show you. Now that I have some things over here, you can see me rotating through this in a three dimensional way. All right? We can use these things here and we get some different perspective. You can also use your uh, mouse. So if you right click and hold and drag, you can kind of rotate around. If you hold down the shift key and right click, this will allow you to kind of move back and forth. We call this panning. All right. And then we can zoom in. And then if I wanted to focus in on this object right here, I could select it and then use this tool here that I showed you before, and it'll kind of zoom in and focus in on that. So that's a little bit about the workspace. We'll learn some of the other things that we have here a little bit later on, but that gives you a good introduction to how to kind of manipulate things around the Tinkercad workspace. One thing um, that you should note is that anytime you make a change, Tinkercad will attempt to save your project automatically, so there is no saving. You will, can just rely on the fact that it will save it for you. All right, hope you enjoy.